Hi everybody, the very beautiful, aged, beautiful audio snobs are back in town and you know, like a fine wine, like a, a vintage valve, that's a tube to you Americans, and like a beautifully reconditioned Neve console, we're back and we're going to talk about saturation. Why? Why is it so popular these days in this pristine digital age? Why on earth is saturation so popular in the digital community? Let's go. I think the proof <laughs> is all, all, the, all the number of plugins that are available just to try and get back to what people still see as the sort of, uh, to a greater extent, the golden standard, which is analog. I hear. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going out of their way to do as many plugins as possible, make things sound like analog. And it shows you how far away we really are from analog, because otherwise you wouldn't need that many plugins to recreate something that was there in the first place. Does this suggest something wrong about digital? Analog in this digital age, I think we have to accept, I think people have to accept that there's something missing with digital. And I'm going to I'm going to propose this that when we make records when we work with sounds in a in a way in a way that's very similar to movies we're not creating any kind of reality it's not supposed to be real it's really not when you look at a movie it looks better than reality when you listen to a record it sounds better than reality. Precisely, precisely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, now, but, do you remember uh, I said last week uh, I had the good fortune of working with Glyn Johns when I was a bass player? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, he told us this story about how Sony, I think it's Sony or Philips, mm. that they'd called him to come and see their brand new like digital tape recorder. Yeah. And they set up this demo with a string quartet in a really nice room and everything. And they, buzzing us. So sorry. they recorded, um, they recorded the string quartet and then played it back off digital. And he said, and it sounded exactly the same. So he said to them, well, what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, that's not exciting, is it? You know, which, you know, and you think about what we do, for instance, we were talking about vocals last week. What do we do? We pump. We pump stuff into that to make it sound a million dollars. If it was just the regular sound of someone, yeah, like like you said with Glenn Johns, what's the point of that? We EQ it lovingly. We 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 bathe it in 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 in, in totally non realistic reverbs. I mean, we talked about the Lexicon 480. I absolutely love digital algorithmic reverbs, but they don't sound like reality do they you know <laughs> we compress it so that the levels of it when she goes ah screams it's all nicely tucked in it's not uh, it's not reality and digital i think that's a beautiful point that's a beautiful point chris glenn you know had hit the nail on the head what's the point of that and that's i think where we're at with digital let's pump some steroids in this let's make it sound decent you know yeah, and it's a quick, it's a quick, it's a quick win, isn't it? If you've got a, mm. a something, doesn't matter what it is, some kind mm. of black box plugin, mm. that you put stuff in and it comes out, it just sounds nicer. Um, and I, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to know where you would draw the line between saturation and distortion. How would you define saturation? Absolutely. I, th I think um, again, it's levels. Um, so. Maybe you you could think of it like coloration is less um, intensive as uh, saturation, which is less intensive to mm -hmm. overdriving, which is less intensive to distorting. Yeah, you know, there's there's like um, there's a point. I never heard I never heard a greater piece of advice than somebody who said to me, uh, it was an American engineer, and mm -hmm. he said, I said to him wow you know you're really screwing the the gain on your eqs and stuff and he said yeah, yeah. and he <laughs> said <laughs> what i do is i screw it in until it distorts and then i back it off a little bit <laughs> hey. hey that that is do you know what i got in trouble for that in one of my videos on, mm. on darling youtube by saying that exact thing and that is a really standard thing for yeah for yeah class you know really experienced engineers to do you yeah do it then you back it off a bit and you yeah. get it into the sexy zone that's not yeah. that stupidly distorted basically yeah. and some nerd arsehole who'd 
you know, probably never made a put released a piece of music or anything. Yeah, but it was insistent that I must meet to it and it must all be done scientifically and exactly. It was like, well that's not really <laughs> <laughs> And this is this is a great point because um I think with all of these things like coloration, saturation, overdrive, distortion. Yeah. Maybe not distortion, but the others, I think you need to train your ears to hear it. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Because if you don't, you'll go straight past you and you won't you won't even know that was saturation, you know. Shades of saturation. Right. You and know. and understanding when you hear those those elegant shades of, of saturation, mm. which mm. one is which, which one's the valve, which one's the mm. The, yeah. the the germanium which one's the fet which one's yeah. the you know mm. this is priceless marcellus you know yeah you know flavor because there are of course flavors of saturation a tube, yes. a, a oh tube my god yes saturating two yeah. tubes saturating will sound different to each other let alone when a you can to, to a triode yeah, absolutely yeah. and yeah. then with then we bring tape machines into into the equation which saturate tape uh, distortion biasing speed of the tape machine curves of the tape machine uh yeah. level of the tape you know and then let's get into you know uh, transistors and transformers because right. you can overload them them as well and right. there's which another is, type of saturation yeah you just you just um reiterated the standard neve sound transformers and transistors because the Absolutely. whole point of those um those mm. great eq modules vintage yeah. eq models was yeah. you had two transformers one on the output one on the input yeah. and in the middle you had a germanium <laughs> transistor so mm. people find it difficult to explain what neve sounds like well it's mm. a big fuzzy sound because that's, what's, big, fuzzy <laughs> sound. Cause that's yeah. what's inside the box you know can I add to that? It's a big, beautiful, fuzzy sound. It certainly is. Caviar, I think you said. Uh, you said. Point. You know, <laughs> did I? Credit where it's due, I said. You said the caviar of saturation. Yeah. There you go. I like that. It really is. <laughs> can, I, can I say this? You know, not even, you don't have to be our age. Uh, you, you will have heard, while you were growing up, Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole, Aretha mm. Franklin, Ray Charles, you would have heard these people sing into big fat tubes, beautiful warm valve gear, and that kind of the benchmark, isn't it? You know, in our surreal world of beautiful sound, that's kind of they're they're benchmarks we're talking there, aren't we? The the um the whole um um process of of saturation came from the valve era which i believe is like the 50s and 60s right yeah, yeah the and to this day the valve is still <laughs> the most um me. got the most detail in yeah. the sound because mm -hmm. let's face it transistors are kind of like baby you know, one dimensional more yeah. one dimensional they give you the punch or the grit or they give you the whatever it is. but how you bias the valve is mm. going to give you that valve distortion you know Mm -hmm. So, so it's quite clear to me that the, the granddaddy of every saturation is valve because that was yeah. the first. And yeah. so, all your Neumann, all, all your Neumann mics, valve mics, yeah. would be going into valve consoles. Yeah, you know. Um, have, of course, that's what I said. I mean, like a, yeah. a, a, a universal audio six ten is right. a tube. I say tube for our American right list of viewers because hey guys. Right. Love you. So you, age, you valves. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hundred percent right. And 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 in Europe, it was the um, Telefunken. Telefunken. Whoa, yeah. and Siemens. So you, and Siemens, of course, which was mm -hmm. pretty yeah. well same company almost. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, the German thing and the American thing. You know, mm -hmm. the two different valve sounds. And you heard the records that Frank Sinatra record sounded different to a, uh, you know, European counterpart. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but then those same Neumann uh, mics got plugged into Neve consoles, which are transformer-based germanium uh, yeah. sound. Germanium is you know. a roughneck, isn't it? Yeah, it's a roughneck. <laughs> 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 and then API came with the op amps, you know, twenty-five twenties yeah. or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was the wealth. Um, yeah. So as you went through the decades, fifties and sixties were valves, seventies and eighties were. Yeah. Transistors, new vistas, germaniums, zeners, you know, silicone, 
uh, yeah. circuits. Yeah. Um, then you went into the eighties, which was basically um, SSL vintage. Yeah. Would then, you wouldn't say SSL vintage? I on. would. I would actually. Yeah. Paul. It is vintage these days. Yeah, because eighties is vintage to me, and it's bandwidth as well. I noticed that. Um, when Neve brought out the VR, which I yeah. believe was Lovely. early nineties, yeah, I love the VR. and believe, um, by the way, that it wasn't designed by Rupert Neve. He had left the company by that point. I think <laughs> another designer who'd been at Neve all his life, or Robin Porter, or something like that. that even rings a teeny bell for me. Yeah, what, so he console the VR though. Yeah, yeah, and and the VR uh, was a different circuit to the the previous news so mm -hmm. in the same way when SL brought out the J and K's that was completely different circuit to the E's and G's mm -hmm. just just on the, just on the um aspect of bandwidth yeah you know so mm -hmm. um so you you had you have VCA's base and transistors in a, an SSL um yeah. E series and G series then I noticed from about two th in in the nineties it progressed and they they released Neve released the eighty eight R in two thousand. I remember that. Yeah, and and pretty well uh, SSL followed suit with J's and K's. Mm -hmm. So I classify those two as modern saturation and the rest of it as vintage saturation. I like it. I think we're agreeing here that the digital world is is this super duper clean. A, a disinfected operating theater of a sound environment it certainly is paul but you wouldn't want your surgeon to be anybody but james brown <laughs> 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 because he's the godfather of saturation let's face it oh my you god know. he could saturate even 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 the, the most bulletproof mic all he's got oh yeah screaming yeah, yeah. it and it's yeah. distortion city right mm. so guys you know are we agreed that, that digital is too clean? That's what I was saying there, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'd go with that. It's lost. It's it's it needs the character put back into it or it needs something with some character that yeah. gives it personality. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's the only way I can look at it. OK, I think we're all agreed on that, aren't we? So that would explain why people are a using digital emulations of classic pieces of analog gear you know tube based transistor based except tape based i mean there are even tape simulators out there and there are, there are only a couple that are absolutely brilliant because i owned uh, an mtr 90 24 track tape machine and all four of us have worked so much with tape machines we know the sound and behavior of tape machines inside out there's one by a company called yuhi i think marcellus i think you're familiar with this and yeah, yeah. Uh, it's called satin and it it models everything about you can even switch between different models and you can even switch dolby noise reduction circuits in <laughs> it, you know so th th i think we're getting to why people are doing this yeah. they want to they want to get that gorgeous funk back that digital doesn't inherently have paul there's a great um addition on the on the um ssl uh, channel strip on uad yeah where you can actually bring the transformer in from the my camp by flicking a link button yeah and it it really gives the ssl a bit more of what you want you know so there's a company you're going to love this it's called pulsar modular mm -hmm. right now their their plugins are like excruciatingly expensive and these guys have come up i've got to remind myself but it's called p42 climax and what it is is a digital recreation of a line amp right a line amp this this plugin is 250 pounds to buy <laughs> they're arrogant enough to say to you on their website well 250 pounds might seem like a lot for for a line amp but it would cost you six thousand dollars or so to buy it as hardware uh, and what of course they're saying is you can have a neve preamp on every channel of your mix and to do that with the hardware would have cost a, an absolute fortune. Mm -hmm. It is, I, I, sorry guys, it is 
a thing of exquisite beauty. It, 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 I have to say, it is the best digital recreation of analog funk that I've ever heard. Wow. So when, when, is it designed to be driven? Or oh, God, yeah. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Any any of you guys have favourite saturation plugins, especially like you know preamp type plugins? Anybody? Uh, well, uh, I use the oxide tape plugin a lot. The Universal okay. Audio One, because it's got uh, you know you can change the speed, you can change the the bias. Yeah. Uh, you can put uh, I think it's SR. I think it's the switch in and out. Dolby. You can switch to repro and sync heads if you really want. Okay. Um, and and yeah, you sort of push something into it, push it harder, push it harder. Oh, that sounds good or not? Mm -hmm. um, just very quick yeah. and not over, not over coloured, but some. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just nice. It's nice. Can I, can I just throw this in here though? My problem with all of these digital plugins is there's one thing that they don't reproduce for me. And it's the punch I used to get from recording something hot to tape. Am I going mad? Did I? I mean, what do you guys think? I think it misses that punch that I used to get from something recorded hot to a piece of two-inch tape coming back at me. Yeah, we're back to saturation, aren't we? I mean, that'll do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And if you set up your tape machine properly, you, yeah. you can you can do that if you if you load it a plus say over three twenty. If you bias it right, if you use the right tape for the sound you want, mm -hmm. then as you hit the plug in harder, it's going to give you give you as close to that feeling you had. Mm -hmm. I think you know, mm -hmm. and um, there, I think there's some great plugins, Paul. I think mm -hmm. some fantastic plugins. I love the black box plugin. I don't know if you come across that. Oh, I have plugin alliance are doing that, aren't they? It's That's fantastic. Pensado's Pensado's secret source. They all love it in LA. They love mm -hmm. it here. They love it there. And it's a great plugin for yeah. valve saturation. Um, I, I like the tra um, the uh, germanium compressor plugin mm -hmm. from uh, oh. Chandler. Do you know what I've, I've got a germanium? Go on from Chandler, who are yeah. they? Basically, do EMI, don't they? That's yeah, like. basically. So you've got Chandler copying the the germanium through the the Beatles and EMI sound, mm -hmm. and then you've got uh, Neve using the the germanium with mm -hmm. the transformers for that American sound. Mm -hmm. So th that that's two separate um, saturations, in my opinion. Transatlantic, you know, and and British. Yeah. Um, I also like Plugin Alliance's uh, SPL Iron. It's I, got, I, that's what I was trying. I was going to mention because I've right, got that. I've right. got that myself. So and you've got is... the, the rectifier. Right? You can set Zeno. You can set it mm -hmm. to germanium. You can set it to LED silicon, and you got all these flavors. Of... That is the fattest compressor I've ever heard. Yeah, it, it's life. a very EMU compressor, but it has. Yeah, um, yeah. Tran transistor uh rectifiers yeah you know and the germanium rectifier is pretty special that so, sounds rude somehow doesn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah it, the, is. it is the, uh, the, there are some special plugins you know for saturation mm. uh, I, I think fantastic stuff well can we talk about this because plugin alliance you you touched on there now they uh, obviously brainworks and plugin alliance are the same people yeah and what they developed was um, a, a way to dial in THD, total harmonic distortion. Into, That's right. And you've got, you know, you can dial it in. How yeah. much, how and, much do you want? And the, the THD on the mm. Zena compressor yeah. is to die for. It's yeah. like um, that TH, just run that THD. You don't need to do mm -hmm. anything on the EQ. Just run mm -hmm. it through the THD and it just like goes pow. I love like you know, it. I have to say. I love it. it. Yeah. I do. You yeah. know, I I was kind of cynical of it when I saw it. I, uh, but I use a plugin of theirs that I really like called Master Desk. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah, called, yeah, it's really nice. good. It's sort yeah. of, yeah. And it has that funky THD thing built into it, which mm. uh, you can, you know, you can back off. I, I think we're agreeing that we like. In our digital world, in our surreal world of audio production, in the digital 
version of it that is predominant these days. We like to spice it up. We, our ears, have appreciated for decades, as have everybody else's, everything that was spicy and lovely about analogue. And we've found a situation where everybody wants some of that spice, some of that meat and potatoes, and a nice juicy steak in their digital domain. So how the hell, what are your favourite ways of getting that flavour into your digital world? Chris? Recording it in the first place. That's right. Uh, it really Whatever works for you. And, and, and I think, I think <laughs> for me, um, and I can't say I've really gone into the science, but in the real world, um, audio frequencies, of course, go way past human hearing. Absolutely. And but those those um, very high frequencies affect the lower frequencies. They, I agree. They, um, so if you're processing, uh, let's say a trumpet has probably has information up to I don't know two hundred k or something probably um, because it's it's metal. Um, so when you feed that through uh, something that's going to add saturation, a bit of coloration. Those, those frequencies are affecting what comes out at the end. Once you've got it into digital, you've lost all of that information. So you'll never be able Truncates. to process it in the same yeah. way. It just gets literally chopped off. So you'll Truncates. never be able to uh, mm. process it in the same... It, the circuitry won't react the same way as it does to the original signal. That's, that's, that's how I've worked it out in my head. Anyway. That's Very priceless, good. Chris. Yeah, exactly. That's priceless. Mm. I think that's the one thing Roger Nyquist got wrong. Mm actually cutting it off because tape machines don't, don't discriminate against frequencies do they <laughs> and saturation in particular is a test of that because remember you're you're mm. boosting second third fourth fifth tenth order harmonics which is at least yeah. 40k mm. right mm. i think i think um uh to do it before you stick it in the digital world would be mm. a massive plus mm. however yeah. You still got a lot of scope for for um, finding the right saturation, the right order harmonics mm -hmm. to create it in the box as well. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, and a great way of actually, um, I'm coming back to the same thing, Tim, about uh, looking at it and hearing it. Um, I think that the um, if you stick a, a sine wave through uh, your favourite piece of kit that you want to see what it's actually doing in terms of harmonic distortion you stick mm -hmm. 1k um into a uh, into your box let's let's say what's your favorite distortion box tim yeah for what? Tim. Yeah. <laughs> for what for guitars for keyboards anything yeah for guitars oh, i don't know just say a big muff or something like okay that. so stick a big muff um stick the, the tone into a big muff stick the big muff into the q3 eq the fab filter um mm. and you'll see your fundamental frequency mm. as you 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 turn the, the big muff uh up and you know it's overdriving and stuff you'll see all of the distortions uh the harmonics come up as you drive it they'll come up higher and it'll show you which harmonics that mm. piece of kit is is boosting so now you've got a visual mm -hmm. to to be able to look at and think what am i hearing mm -hmm. when the big muff goes in you've got a visual explanation of what's going on there um so i, I think that's a really critical thing when you start starting to learn about saturation i think okay may I, this is priceless myself absolutely please don't let me cut you off too much not yet. at all please no, no please go this but this yeah. is a priceless way for, for 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 people to learn also about synthesis because uh if we look at a standard basic subtractive synthesizer what it does is it generates waveforms right so the purest of which is a sine wave and we can as marcellus is saying we can analyze that uh, if we were to use any um, modern equalizer, it will show us the waveform. And you can see that there's a linear line going along in the middle, which is no activity, nothing happening. And then when you play a sine wave, you'll see just one line appear vertically up and down across that axis. There's only one difference between a sine wave and any other 
waveform created by a synthesis is extra harmonics generated, right? So if we look, see our sine wave, there it is. And then we flip to, shall we say, a triangle wave. We'll see a little second harmonic pop up on the display. It's not as loud as the, as the fundamental harmonic, but it's there. And maybe we've seen a hint of a third harmonic come up. And then as we change through more complex waveforms, as you say, Marcellus, I'm just adding to your thing here, really. So can yeah, I bounce that off you and say, what do you think? You know? Yeah, ab absolutely. And then you, yeah. you look at um, what, what piece of gear you use in Saturate. And yeah. like if I want, if I want to make a, a guitar yeah. sound, sound uh, brighter and more aggressive, I use a pentode. Yes. If I want to make, yeah. if I want to make it more creamy and, and buttery, I use a, a triad and a great piece of kit. I'm sure you know about this one, Paul, the, the, um, uh, what's it called? The, uh, culture vulture. This is wonderful because, uh, you know, that is, uh, uh, that is a very wonderful company, isn't it? And we yeah. used to, that they were manufactured by hand in Chiswick. Um, so you very occasionally saw one of those in the studio and that was like why on earth does that exist because all it did was use tubes to generate even an odd harmonics to to, to saturate something to to to, to distort it basically uh, arturia now have remodeled it digitally you can get it again as yeah a and the, U, the uad one is banging they it's do great. it as well okay it's absolutely yeah. spot on yeah why the hell did did they decide that we needed more saturation, baby? Digital synthesizers, maybe. That, that makes sense. FM synthesis. A bit yeah. more warmth in it. Yeah. More yeah. warmth. What the hell is warmth? Warmth is fuzzy, is it? That's a really good question. Mm. Is it mud? Is it mud or warmth? What the hell is warmth? We go yeah. on about it all the time. Yeah, what is it? and and there's nothing warm about an EVQ, but everybody says it's warm. So go that's figure that. That's true. They're brutes. If you, I mean, yeah. they yeah. can be brutes. They, they can things. be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what the hell is warmth, Tim? What's warmth to you, baby? <laughs> <laughs> so subjective, isn't it? Um, <laughs> well, I yeah. I don't really know how I'd even start to. Uh... Is it a smudginess? Is it a blurriness, sir? Ooh, suit you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a general thickening of things. And what, you know, what's that then being used to cause that? That can vary a few times, you know, but. Uh... Is it low end, sir? Do you like that, sir? <laughs> Trouble is, terms problem. like that, people have different uh, different interpretations. And can I try and define what the hell warmth is? Okay, I'll give you not a definition. Me, not yeah, us, go on. what the experts have decided oh, warmth is. Okay. Because yeah. this is quite interesting. Waves, the biggest plugin developers on the planet from day one till now, the biggest plugin developers of the lot, right? Now, Waves have in their collection of plugins some fantastic plugins, and they've got a collection of about 250 plugins. Their very latest two plugins that they've released are both saturation plugins. Now, they've already released shed loads of saturation plugins before. I mean, they came up with the whole Abbey Road series, emulating, you know, the old uh, EMI console cutting lathe, yeah. and you name it so yeah. they've already done saturation before why the hell are they doing saturation again because it's flavor because they well, they're, they're following trends they want to uh, they want to put out that it's marketing so do you know what this yeah. will make you all of you laugh I, if you haven't seen these things the, the first one that came out is literally just a saturation and it's a big black knob <laughs> oh, saturation! and the, the newest one that came out a few days ago about a week ago i think is a tube channel strip now they've already got tube channel strips in their collection but this one's got a big black knob on it that says saturation so uh, there are a couple of very technical people who review plugins on 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 youtube 
Thank you, guys. Um, and what they've done is they've used a thing called Plugin Doctor. I have Plugin Doctor. Um, Plugin Doctor is a, a, a plugin analysis program. So it will show you exactly what plugins are doing. Brilliant. And for instance, if you put in um, a Pultec, it will show you if you if you select 30 hertz and increase it by to two or three or whatever, it will show you exactly the curve uh, and it will show you exactly what the hell it is doing. And it will show you the difference between two Pultec plugins their own perceptions of what the pull tech would do when you chose that and it's quite scary how different a lot of these plug-in uh, versions of the pull tech eq p1a are so what these wave saturation these new wave saturation plugins have been seen to be doing in plugin doctor which does not lie so hey waves there's nothing you can do about it, mate. Plugin Doctor has shown that what you do is you owe, you uh, instantiate some mild harmonics, mild amount of harmonics, just a little bit. But more importantly, what you're doing with that plugin, those two plugins, waves, is you are adding a hump at 60 hertz, which is quite a wide hump at 60 hertz. Mm -hmm. So if I'm to su suggest that there's a definition of warmth, well, waves, I think, and, and I have seen reviews, of uh, plug-in doctor reviews of other warmth, saturation, analogy sounding things, and they're all almost exclusive. Uh, sorry, almost all of them are adding this 60 hertz hump. <laughs> hmm. Specifically hmm. 60 hertz. Yeah. I would, uh, I would, I would uh, kind of agree with that. That warmth mm -hmm. is the balance between top and bottom. Um, like that. So, if you've got too much bottom and you put a bit of top in, it can make it sound warm rather than muddy. I hear that. So uh, you know the two work together to make it warm. If one is out of balance, then mm -hmm. it's not going to be warm. It's either going to be muddy or bright. You know so. The, the balance of bottom against top is warmth to me. I like that. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Great. What's warm to you, Chris, baby? Talk to me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just when it sounds nice. <laughs> if it sounds rich, I suppose. Rich. rich. I like it's that. Not, it's yeah. not pinging the hairs, it hairs in my ears. Yeah. No. Mm. yeah rich, rich is good. I didn't know you had hairy ears, Chris. Oh, I do try and keep it cut down, but, you know. <laughs> And again, this is a classic problem between modern stuff and older stuff. The specs made it a bit more, you mm. know, the, the crosstalk of the tambourine coming through the desk onto the kick channel. <laughs> Chatter. It gives you that little dust in the record that you, mm. you can't you can't do that with digital, <laughs> you know. Mm. So I love yeah, moves. Don't there's two what, arguments. There's moves, two yeah. arguments here. This digital analog thing will probably run the space of all of these um, shows, I'm sure. Yeah, because that's where we are now. You know, in the fifties, you had valves. That's that. That was that. It was now we've got everything. So what are we going to do? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we have managed to agree that we think um, saturation plugins are a good thing in the digital domain because we're not trying to live with a brutal reality <laughs> we're trying to put on the soft focus and turn it into a beautiful great big movie scene what an art adventure about, isn't it? Mm, yeah yeah sorry yeah. tim i say that's what art's about making it beautiful that's taking true. it doesn't have to be reality you know it can be the it's the dressed up reality that we'd like to see yeah and and, and digital is just a bit too naked for us and uh, it's just a bit too naked yeah showing the warts and all and we rather just gloss over them Photoshop have them decided. Away. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so hey very cool so we have been as usual audio snobs and uh a little bit of a word for you people you love this. We have a new Patreon channel, patreon.com forward slash audio snobs. Ah, oh, seriously, we've got the best t shirt ever. If you want to be an audio snob, also, you can wear it on your chest with pride. So, do go visit our Patreon. We've also got some free serum 
presets and skins which are utterly amazing seriously if you don't believe go take a look um, so utterly stunning skins for serum and some great 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 presets for it so do go visit our patreon uh, otherwise do come back next week and um, see you later